Welcome to the Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of Android Essentials, featuring our quote-unquote experts, Ian Arbuck and Ryan Rampersad, and our quote-unquote guinea pig, Ian Decker. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED10. All right, so this episode is supposed to be kind of a guide to Android, some of the the things that you may not know about your Android phone, but you probably should. Uh, and our intention here is not for it to be just a guide for new Android users, but also hopefully surfacing things about Android that experienced Android users may not know. Um, so we've got some pretty cool tips and tricks up our sleeves, hopefully. Um, and so as, as such, we've uh, filled the room here with uh, two people who have been using for Andro- Android for a while, right? Very so long time. How long have you been using? Uh, I, don't think I've... <laughs> I can hook you up, man. I know a guy. Um, but yeah, I uh, let's see. I got my first Android device back. When was the first uh, Nexus 7 introduced, Ryan? That was Ice Cream Sandwich. 2012. 2012, yeah, yeah. So I've been... Ooh, wow, four years. It doesn't feel as long as, as four years. Uh, like, that seems like a big number. Um, Ryan's been using for a lot longer. Many, than many I years. I was trying to find a link to figure out what it was, but it's before 12 then. Yeah, you, at least since high school, right? Uh, so, yeah. So, yep. pro- so 11. 9, 10, 11, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time for me. I've gone through all the way since Froyo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the other end of the spectrum, we've got uh, Ian Decker with us. Hello. And uh, you've got there on the table... Your new Nexus 5X, right? Yeah, buddy. And that's not actually technically your first Android phone. Well, yes and no. I mean, <laughs> I'm counting it as my first because it's the first one that I've actually, you know, had the opportunity to use. Mm-hmm. As Yeah, it's the first one that's actually been activated. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back in 2013, you got, what, the HTC Thunderbolt, I think it was? Yeah. And uh, didn't before you had a chance to activate it on your carrier... You lost it. And I'm not sure... Well, yes. It, it was on my person, and then it was not, and then it was unable to be found. Yeah. So something happened to it. So something happened to it. So I'm not sure if it just fell out of my pocket and somebody picked it up, or what. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, between the three of us, we should have uh, a lot of information to share, and uh, hopefully you know, we'll be able to share it in a way that everybody can understand. Um, and I also reached out to a bunch of people online, uh, kind of crowdsourced our research here, uh, asking for some tips and tricks uh, from from the community. It was on Facebook. And it was, it was, and it was on Twitter, and it was on Google Plus. Oh. Uh, guess which one of those places I got the least hits? Twitter. No. Oh. Google Plus. Well, isn't yeah. that a surprise? Yeah. Um, surprisingly, yeah, on Twitter, I only got Max Marty to, to reply. Hey, that's pretty good, though. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, um, I'll I'll let you know who who uh, gave us which pieces of information as we go through. Uh, so first, we're gonna do uh, a lot of the kind of some of the settings that you want to adjust when you first get a phone um, slash like s- system wide things that you need to be aware of. So I think we should begin with that. The first thing you do when you get a new Android phone is go through the setup process, which involves what? Uh, well, I believe you had to log into your Google account. Mm-hmm. Right? And that is the yep. first single most important thing you must do. Yeah, definitely. You need to have a Google account attached to your Android device. It's not optional. Just go do it. I can't tell if you're telling us that it's actually not optional or that it's uh, unreasonably... Oh, it is totally optional. And people do it. Don't do uh, that's it. That's awful. Get a Google account if you don't have one. You'll be greeted wonderfully with open arms. And then have one and one use it. One of us. One of us. Indeed. Um, and so, yeah, the, the Google account, the reason that you want that is because it allows your phone to synchronize a lot of the things that you do with and, it. And pretty much everything that follows here either involves, to some degree, Google services somehow, mm-hmm. or yeah, an app that also requires it indirectly. Right. Can you even install things from the Play Store without a Google account? No, you right. may not. So, yeah, you're going to need a Google account for sure if you want to, like, install most of the apps that we're going to be talking about. Right. Yeah. All right, so first up, what we want to do is we want to make sure to turn on high-accuracy location mode, mm-hmm. uh, and that uh, should be part of the setup process. I think they ask you if you want to do that. That sounds about right. Yeah, um, and the reason that you want to do that, uh, and also opt into Google location history, um, and those two things are key 
to your smartphone being able to be as smart as it can be, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, you have a smartphone and you don't want to just use it as kind of a dumb terminal to make calls and text messages. Um, it, it really should be able to be your personal assistant for like pretty much everything in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, at least everything in your life that can have data associated with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and don't let high accuracy scare you. It doesn't always have that on. It only uses it when an app requires high accuracy. Right. It yeah. just means that it can go up to that level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the different levels, there's like one that high accuracy, uses... battery saver, and GPS only. Yeah. And guess which one's the worst? GPS only is the worst right. in terms of battery usage. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah. So like location is like a really really important piece of data that your phone can use to to give you what you need right mm -hmm. um so if if you're trying to check like the weather you don't want to have to go like okay i want weather for saint paul mm -hmm. if you just want to be able to say like okay weather and it'll give you the weather for your current location you know right. mm -hmm. um by the way those are i mean these this is just sort of given but it's in it's in the location tab there is a specific location tab in the settings so that's yes. where you go to find it mm -hmm. um Second thing is you're definitely going to want to opt into Google Now. Uh, so Google Now is one of my favorite things that Google has introduced in the last few years um, because it, it takes this kind of concept of the personal assistant and maximizes it as much as they possibly can. Uh, so Google Now is a... They portray it as a list of cards um, that are going to try to give you the information that Google thinks that you need at a given time uh, before you even ask for a particular thing. So um, if you if you use your Google Calendar consistently, you know, and you actually keep it up to date with the things that you're going to be doing, you know, it'll give you like a, a schedule for the rest of the day. Um, it'll tell you um, if you if you have the uh, location set on a particular thing that's coming up on a particular event that's coming up it'll tell you like given current traffic conditions i know that you like to drive there uh this is how long it's going to take you this is when you need to leave right mm. um so it, it takes all this different information your current location the location of the thing you know and puts it all together in into the stuff that you actually need to know right um so it takes all those steps that you would have had to go do manually to figure out that stuff and and does it before you even ask um they also try to figure out like yeah what you're interested in so right now we're in election season so those of us who have been uh doing google searches for election season related things will probably see like uh primary results mm -hmm. etc you might also see movie reviews uh you might see stocks if you're interested mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can see you will also maybe see unfortunately terrible search results for things you don't care about <laughs> and so just stay away from those yeah where is google now how do that i that is a great that? question i am so glad you asked so when you get a new phone if it's a nexus device you'll be greeted with the stock launcher which is called what google now launcher which is funny because that's exactly what we're talking about they named their stock launcher after their premier product so to get to it what do you do so when you're on your home screen you swipe all the way to the left hand screen that's right um, so you have like, you have your home screen, which is like the left hand most screen where you can put app icons. And then to the left of that is another screen. And that's going to be your Google now. Now, if you are not using a Nexus device, you might be greeted with something that's atrocious. You will have to open the Google search app. And if you open the Google search app, that is effectively Google now. You will see yep. your cards there. Now, there is a shortcut to get to it. And, and it works not just from the launcher. Not just from your home screen, but from any app that you're in. Right. And what is that shortcut? You should be able to long press the home button, and it will bring you to the Google Now. Unless Now on Tap is enabled still. Ah, uh, but you you do have to go through that step to enable that if you want to. Isn't that default? No, it's actually not. Good. Um, yeah, so Now on Tap is, they've taken that further uh, and Ryan and I aren't huge fans of it. And by further, we believe that it's a step backwards. Instead mm -hmm. of getting you to the cards faster, it gives you sort of an intermediate step. You can still click through by hitting the big G there. Yeah. But uh, watch out for that. So, yeah, stay away from Google Now on tap for now. Just just get to Google Now. Yep. Stay away from taps. Only get the bottled stuff. Exactly. <laughs> Never on tap. Um, all right, so contacts. 
you have no idea how much I hate seeing Facebook posts saying, I got a new phone, or my old phone dropped in the toilet and I don't have my contacts anymore. Everybody, please send me a message with your phone number so I can put you in my new phone. So what I've always wanted to do in those cases is just send them my phone number to see if they would actually do something with it. Because I don't know most of the people who ask for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and the reason that I that I hate seeing that is because we live in 2016, and every single phone that is that is internet connected should con could be synchronizing your contacts and and one of the reasons we so strongly told you to get your account set up is because once you set up your google account your contacts will immediately begin syncing mm -hmm. yeah a lot of the things that we're about to talk about actually should be on by default um and if for some reason they're not Please go fix that. Now, I, with that said, if you're using the stock Android Contacts app, that will be true. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're for some reason using your OEM's provided Contacts app, this might not be as true. Right, yeah. So, if, like, for example, if you've got a Samsung device, you might see two Contacts apps in your app drawer. Um, and, yeah, you got to kind of be aware of which one's which, which one came from Samsung, which one came from Google. It is um, possible that the, the, the OEM version, so your Samsung Contacts app or People app or whatever they call it, it might still indeed sync with Google. However, you might have to specify which do you want. Do you want it to cloud sync or do you want it to be local or mm -hmm. SIM based? Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to be aware of those distinguishing factors. And another advantage of this is that like... It's a lot easier to switch from one platform to another mm -hmm. if you have your contacts synchronized. Um, so when we were switching, Ian, from your iPhone mm -hmm. to your Android phone, um, I tried to do it directly from the iPhone, and I discovered that that wasn't going to be so easy. But once we synchronized your contacts up to your iCloud account, we were able to go to a computer, download a file from your iCloud with all of your contact information and just import that into Google Photos. Speaking or Google, of, Pho Google Contacts. Yeah, speaking of which, Google Contacts online, which is what? Uh, Google.com slash contacts? Uh, uh, Contacts.google.com. Same thing. So you can you can do everything online, too, once you get your contacts syncing. Mm -hmm. And it's a really great interface, so do that. Yeah, and that that's uh, available for most of Google's services, is they have uh, yeah a website version and an app version and they should immediately, like, you, the changes that you make in one, you should see in the other. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's context. Um, you should probably familiarize yourself with the concept of widgets, especially if you are new to Android. Um, so I've seen a lot of iOS users who, you know, they, they're used to the home screen just being a grid of icons, and those icons are shortcuts to the apps that they want to open, right? Mm -hmm. um, Android allows the launcher to do a lot more things than just that um, and widgets are the primary vessel that those things go through um, so widgets when you install an app it it will it'll put its shortcut into the app drawer but it'll also if it has any widgets associated with it it'll put those widgets into a widgets list and when you take a widget and drop it onto your uh, home screen um, it'll sit there uh, and it'll look it'll look like usually it'll look different than a just an icon. Um, so a lot of times they'll take up like a maybe a two by two space or you know a four by two space. So or it's one not, by one. Yeah, or one by one. Some of them are very small, um, but some of them are a little bit larger. Um, usually the larger ones are large because they're trying to show you more information than uh, than just being a shortcut. So like um, I personally have a calendar widget on my home screen so that I can see what events are coming up in my day without having to open up the calendar app in order to do that. And not all widgets are passive like a calendar app. So mm -hmm. you might be able to add an event from the widget. You might be able to stop or start or stop or start music. Yeah. You might be able mm -hmm. to uh, look at um, your Google contacts or something quickly. There's many things you can do with a widget. Yeah. It's the Play Store. Sorry, there's the Play Store, there's there's Google Play Music, there's Google Play Books. The biggest one that I actually am finding is the Play Store, and that's like 5 by 4 Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It, it's kind of like a slideshow kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So there's there's a lot of widgets. Mm -hmm. Go look. Um, Decide not to use yeah. them. It's it's one of the best ways to take a phone and make it your own. You it know? is. It's also a great way to make your screens full of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of screens, you mentioned that 
you know, most people think of their home screen or their phone screens as just a grid of icons. Tell tell me more about arranging the icons on your ah, phone screen. Yes. So in iOS, we're getting a weird thumbs up here from Ian. Did you do something to your phone? No. So <laughs> I I went to the the um the the in the widgets and I I found the one that was like oh play a playlist from Google Music mm-hmm. and it I didn't necessarily think that it was going to be a bunch of playlists coming up and suddenly it's a bunch of ones that I have from my iPod. Cool. So apparently we had oh. that synced up at some point in okay. time. Yeah. Um so yeah, once you once you select one of those playlists from that list, um then whenever you tap on that widget, it will start playing that playlist um directly and it won't okay. ask you for that list again. Uh yeah. So, okay, next thing that's oh, right. Uh, grid icons, right. right. Um, so in iOS, yeah, you have absolutely no choice about what apps are going to be showing up on your home screen. And you have relatively little control over how they're going to be arranged. All you get is basically the order. Yeah. So you, And the folder support. That's it. Yep, yep. Um, but you can't, like, for example, on one page, I can't take an icon and move it down to the lower right-hand side And then of have the nothing screen. else around it. Exactly. It has to be the end of a list, and that list has to be fill up the rest of the screen before you can get to the lower right-hand side. Right. So in Android, all you have to do on an icon is long press it, and then it will let it be draggable, and you can drag it wherever you want it. Mm-hmm. To get it on another screen, just drag it over to an edge. Um, and you can even remove it entirely from your home screen. You know what you do to do that? You drag it up to remove. Yep. There should be a little thing at the top of the screen that says remove. remove. Yep. Yeah. And so you might be missing, if you're from iOS, the jiggling. There's no jiggling. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, now, the reason that Android allows you to just completely remove an icon from your home screen, you know, you might panic and like, how am I ever going to open that app now? You have to redownload um, it. You have to it, start it, over. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so the... Most Android launchers will have what's called an app drawer, um, and that's just a list of all of the apps that you have installed on your system. And to find that, it's usually a little white circle with six little squares inside. Yep. It's front and center, bottom of yep. your mm-hmm. screen. Yep. And that, that, I think, is the only icon that you can't move around on the stock launcher. And you can kind of think of that as kind of like the start menu from Windows. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's where all the apps are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then your the home screen is like your desktop exactly. where you can put shortcuts. The to ones you like. Yep. Um, all right. So next thing that's different from iOS is the existence of notification LEDs. So a lot of phones, not all of them. Some uh, of them. Some of them will have uh, a, little, a little light on the front of the phone that will kind of blip. Um, after a notification has come in. And that's useful for, like, if I got a notification, um, but I wasn't in the room with my phone when the notification came in, and I didn't hear it, right? Um, If I walk up to my phone later on, on an iPhone, there's absolutely no indication that I missed something. Um, But for most Android phones, uh, you can have a little LED kind of flashing to let you know that there was something that you missed. Um, and you'd have, you have to go into the settings, um, and it's in the notifications and sounds menu, I think, um, to turn it on. And again, not all phones support this. Yeah. So you just have to check to see if you have the option. And there, there are some special things that you can do with it. Like, uh, you can download, um, some apps from the play store that will allow you to specify like what colors you want, what patterns you want, uh, you know, app by app, um, it by default it kind of tries to intelligently figure out like okay so the app icon for this app is green so i'm gonna mostly green right so i'm going to use green as the led notification light for that app Mm -hmm. Um, and it does a pretty good job yep and of course if you expect colors to happen the light in your device needs to be able to just show it Mm -hmm. some devices only have like a white light so oh yeah that's true keep that in mind yep yep um all right so this next one is is a big part of my life for sure, because um, if you have a consistent schedule, uh, so like you go to sleep at the same times and you go to work at the same times, and um, those are two two cases where you probably don't want your phone to just be like loudly pinging you if yeah. somebody messages. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can 
set Android to have uh, automatic rules for your do not disturb modes. And what does do not disturb do? So do not disturb allows you to set um, if you if you choose the priority only level of do not disturb, it'll you can set app by app which ones can be priority apps. Um, if you choose the alarm only level, then it'll only be like timers and alarms and things that you know you have recently told it to kind of you know at a set time make a make a noise. Um, and then there's total silence, which is, you know, it, nothing will make noise, even music players. Um, and so, so you can set that manually from time to time. So like, if you go to the theater, set it, set it to be silent until the end movie's over. But I don't want to have to do that like every single night when right. I go to bed because, um, that's just one more thing for me to do. And it's pretty much the same time every day anyway. And you might forget and then you'll be disturbed. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can set automatic rules for particular times. You can, um, specify like what day of the week, what time and everything. Um, and it's, it's pretty useful. Now, uh, going along with that, there's also a feature here that lets you pick a do not disturb setting in the notification tray thing. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? In the quick settings? Quick settings. That's what it's called. And, uh, one of my favorite features is total silence. Total silence. And uh, I love this feature. I use it pretty much every podcast because I don't want any noise from my phone during my podcast. So I always set it to like six hours because these go forever. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this one doesn't, dear listener, so that you can have a you know a break. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. If you have. Oh, by, by the way, Ian. Yeah. If, if we're saying something that piques your interest, feel free to speak up. <laughs> Will do. Um. So if we, if you have a device that's on a recent version of Android, specifically Android version 6.0, uh, and it has an SD card slot, um, you can set it up. You have the option of either setting the SD card as basically like, you know, you can think of it as a thumb drive or as uh, what's called adoptive storage. Um, and if you're going to be putting this SD card into your device and leaving it there forever and ever and just use it to store you know, to just expand the internal storage of your device. In other words, you do not take it out. Yeah. Um, you're definitely going to want to use the adoptive storage option uh, because that is a really, really easy way to just allow the phone to pretend that that uh, SD card is an expansion and a, a bigger part of the internal storage. Um, and it'll automatically move everything over there that it possibly can. Um, and you don't need to worry about doing that yourself. And so this is really important for cheaper phones, mm-hmm. mid-range phones. They don't come with a lot of internal storage on their own. And so what uh, 6.0 allows you to do is make that storage feel bigger by adding an, an SD card. Prior versions of Android really had you suffer because of this. Yeah, and it's even uh, for me on my NVIDIA Shield tablet, which is, you know, it's not like a low-end tablet. Right. Um, but the... The storage options that I had were 16 gigs or 32 gigs. Right. And I wanted the 16 gig one because I was like, well, I don't need the LTE version. Um, and I think it was like a hundred dollar difference, um, uh, between those two versions. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll, I'll get the, I'll get the cheaper one. Right. Um, but because I'm using that primarily for games, games are rather large. Yeah. Have you heard? Especially the be. games that you'd be playing on a tablet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so like yeah, Hearthstone is a whole two gigs. Um, was it two gigs? I thought it was just one. Some, uh, you I, know, every I th- card is another megabyte. Yeah, and and so um, so yeah, I mean it was very very useful for me to be able to do that on my Shield tablet and not have to worry about running out of storage and manually moving over the apps that I that I could. Right. Where would one find storage? Where Ah, yeah. So if you go into the settings app, you should just see storage as one of the sections. Storage in USB. There we go. Yep. Um and so that'll give you um if you have, you know, multiple if you have internal storage and as SD it should show them both as kind of separate progress bar looking things. Mm-hmm. Um and uh but if you yeah, if you only have one then it's there. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, and I can see that now. Mm-hmm. Fattest one that I have is Hearthstone. That is one point one. There you things. go. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think, interestingly enough, uh, the size of Hearthstone depends on what type of processor you have. Really? In the, yeah, because I think that they have to have different. Wasn't well, that interesting? Yeah, different like graphics. Wow. Thingies. Hmm. Whatever. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Go. One other little thing. Um, 
kind of on this, kind of on the apps. Mm -hmm. Where would I find Google Fit? Is that its own app? Because I know that there's some stuff in the settings for that specifically, but I wasn't seeing anything on it for my phone. Yeah, it is its own app. Um, the icon looks like a kind of orange heart. heart yep, yeah. Heart. Um, it. I would assume that it uh, comes pre-installed on a on a uh, Nexus device, um, yeah, but it I might so. not. I'm not seeing it. No. Which is weird because there's stuff specifically for it in the settings already. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it, it's uh, probably asking about like location settings and and uh, body scanner settings, not body scanner, um, but yeah, different types of sensors that it needs access to or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't have it, then you can go and find it in, in the Play Store probably. Okay. Um, let's see. So tell me about. Uh, so let's say you had a bunch of apps running. Mm hmm. What if you wanted to close them? Yeah. Okay. So. Thanks to Julian Teeple for this, uh, for for bringing up this subject. Um, so the multitasking view, um, which is what? Yeah, what is that? So down there on the bottom of your phone, you should see uh, kind of a, a row of three buttons. Um, if you have a phone that has on-screen buttons, uh, so like a Nexus phone or a Motorola or probably an LG. So in other words, a good phone. Yeah. Um, that play by Google's rules, right? Um, you should see the middle one will be the home button, um, and, and the the icon's probably either a circle or a a home looking icon, um, depending on how old your phone is. Uh, the left hand side will be a triangle or an arrow facing to the left, and that would be your back button. And then the one on the right will be uh, either a square. Or uh, I think it was uh, a couple of lines on top of each other, right? Uh, or some rectangles. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and that is how you get to the uh, recents or multitasking or uh, app switcher, whatever you want to call that screen. Um, so this is a list of the most recent apps that you have had open. Um, and it's, it's the, the fastest way to switch from one app to another, assuming that you have recently had the, the one that you want to switch to open. Right. So let's say you're you're reading something in your email app. You click a link. It opens in 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 Chrome, mm -hmm. and then you want to get back to your email. Well, instead of hitting home and clicking clicking your email app again, you could just use the switcher mm -hmm. to switch back quickly. Um. Yeah. And uh, I have heard a lot of people quoting a piece of false information at me, and I've had to put them straight whenever they do. Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Got to. Well, I was going to say put the herd in them, but that's not right. Um, so a lot of people are under the impression that this is that it works like Windows. So when you're on a Windows computer, if if a if a particular program has a window open, even if it's if there's something else on top of it, you, it it's still running. However, on Android and on iOS, this applies to iOS as well. Um, that is just a list of recent apps. They're not actually necessarily open. They're, they're probably not running in the background. Don't worry about it. You don't need to close them all. You don't need to clear out that list in order to make your phone run faster. That is a false, 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 false understanding. And it might make you feel good to clean it up, but mm -hmm. that's probably worse if you do that. One of the things the App Switcher does is it keeps that information hot. So if you have a bunch of apps that you use frequently... They'll be closer to the top of the list, and mm -hmm. that data will be cached in memory for longer, mm -hmm. which means they'll open faster and be more responsive sooner. That's true. Now, if you close them all, guess what happens? They'll be slower, so don't do it. Yep. However, um, removing an app from that list is a good way to like force it to close if it's misbehaving. If you if you for some reason need to bring it back to the state, you know, have it load everything up from scratch. Um, that is a, a nice quick way to do that. So a common issue when you you might experience is if you're transitioning from Wi-Fi to LTE and you're trying to do a download of something. You know, it could be a podcast, it could be a sync. You know, you're just trying to get new emails. Sure, sure. Sometimes you might just lose connection for a couple seconds, and the app you're in might be just horribly confused. Yeah. So a lot of times I will swipe that app out of the switcher to close it forcefully, and then reopen it, and it'll work fine again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, all right. Next up, phone encryption. Um, so some phones will encrypt your device by default when during the setup process. Uh, others will not. It's it's kind of a, a complete toss up at this point whether your phone is doing Most it or not. Most modern phones will do it these days. Okay. So buy a modern phone. Yeah. Um, and or you, modern flagship that is. 
Uh, and a lot of times you can go and manually tell your phone to encrypt itself. Um, and the choice of whether or not you want to do that is really based on wh- how high end your phone is. If mm-hmm. you have a high end phone, go um, for it. yeah, go for it. Do it. Um, you probably won't see too much of a performance dip. Um, and it just makes it more secure. If you have a lower end phone, eh, it probably pro- not. Probably not. Yeah. So, if you don't want to be spied on by the NSA, get a real phone. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, here we go. Uh, restricting background data. So, I know a lot of people uh, tell me that, you know, okay, well, I, I can't download this thing right now because I'm on my uh, on my cellular data and I don't have unlimited, you know, so I'm going to wait until I get home to do this. Um, and that's, you know, obviously that's a conscious t- choice that they're making right there in the moment. But our phones do a lot of things even while they're in our pockets and we're not interacting with them directly. So how can we make sure that our phones are not using too much data um, but but still doing the things that we want them to while they're in our pocket? Hmm. Um, so in Android, usually you want to go app by app uh, and figure out where in that app's settings you can change that. Um, so for example, Google Photos, um, when you open up Google Photos, you can, you can go into its settings and see, okay, so it, it has the option of backing up photos, uh, either only on Wi-Fi or, uh, both on Wi-Fi and on the cellular data. Um, it all has a separate, a separate option for movies, you know, so if you took a video, do you want it to immediately upload or do you want it to wait till you get to Wi-Fi? Um, you know, and so you can kind of, it's, it's a little bit of granular control, um, now, if if you discover, after you've gotten those settings to what you kind of want them to be, what you think is reasonable, if you discover that a, an app is still using way too much data, um, then you can go and go into the system settings, so Android settings, and look under your data usage area and, uh, and kind of force uh, Android to restrict a particular app if you, lo- if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, go through each app's individual settings first and then go and use the system settings to kind of tweak it to what you want it yep it's a very wise thing to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it's the disadvantage to this system is that each app is going to have different looking system or uh, settings Mm -hmm. menus um so it's a little bit less consistent in in the process that you'll have to go through um but that's the world we live in you know Mm -hmm. Uh, smart lock. Uh, so smart lock is a pretty darn cool thing. If I, if I do say so myself. Um, so smart lock is a system where you can set your phone to keep itself unlocked under certain circumstances. So for example, my phone will always be unlocked whenever it is at home. Um, and so it's, you know, it's true. I can't be certain that I'm the one who's holding my phone when it's picked up at home, but I'm, you know, I'm fairly certain that I'm going to be the one who's doing it. And even if it's somebody else, I'm fairly certain that that person is not maliciously trying to get into my phone, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, housemates, please don't steal my phone and try to do things with it. Um, other other cases are like uh, if you own a smartwatch, um, you could have that smartwatch be a trusted device. So whenever your phone is connected to that watch, it'll be unlocked. <clears throat> or um, if you have an NFID tag somewhere on you. Yes. What the heck are those, Ryan? Well, they're little chip things that you probably won't ever see in your life. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, they're uh, not as popular. I have one in the car, just for cool reasons. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so figuring out what smart lock settings uh, make sense for you is a good idea. Um, some people might want to have it unlocked when they're at work. I definitely do not, because I work at a public high school. Yeah, it might, might be risky at work. And so, uh, in addition to that, some... Um, some some jobs, some enterprise applications that you might install for work or business, they might restrict which ones you can use in some cases. So you might be forced to use a real password, and maybe you won't be able to use a smart lock because mm-hmm. of that, that particular business's or company's uh, standards. So unfortunately, we don't live in a world where you can just do anything. Yeah. Sometimes you'll be forced to do something terrible. Yeah. Um, and I'll also... While we're still talking about smart lock, uh, I would recommend not trying to do the facial recognition one. It doesn't work. It's yeah. For one thing, the 
it's kind of iffy itself on recognizing your face. But also, uh, on some phones, specifically like Nexus phones, uh, there's been a persistent bug that I don't think that they've managed to track down yet, where if the camera process is running for too long, the camera will just become unresponsive. And that facial recognition was a really easy way to make the camera... Uh, process run for a long time and so there were quite a few times uh on my nexus 5 where i would try to open up the camera to take a picture and like up oh, not responding i need to restart the phone now uh, the moment's gone yeah it's uh that's not, it's not something that's good enough to use right now mm-hmm. maybe in the future and it's funny because facial recognition is something that we've that computer manufacturers have been trying to put in uh for a very long time at least 10 years still doesn't work no nope. Too many uh, variables. Yeah. Yeah. Pictures are complicated. There's a lot of data in them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, APKs. Uh, so if you use Windows, you may be familiar with the .exe file type, mm-hmm. uh, which is an executable, right? Yep. You just open it up and that's your program. It, it runs. It works. It's the do thing. Yeah. Um, APKs, sort of analogous. Not exactly. Um, but APKs are the file format used to install an app on your phone. Um, and th- the reason I'm bringing these up is because Android is fairly unique in the mobile space in that you can install an app uh, from from just about anywhere, from any source. Um, on iOS, you have to get the app through Apple's App Store in order to install it. Um, on Android, you could just download an APK from a website and install it on there. Yep. Usually, 99% of the cases, you're going to be installing apps from Google Play. However, there are some, like uh, Amazon only distributes their uh, video playing uh, app through, through their own website. Um, and that's because uh, if, they, if they tried to distribute that app through Google Play, then they would have to charge more for the videos, for the movies that they're selling to you, because that's a, Google's going to be taking a cut of that, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's not actually true, but that's fine. It's, well, yeah. What do you mean it's not actually true? Well, other businesses sell content through the Play Store, and they don't have an issue. But but they what are they selling? Are they selling digital goods? Or maybe physical? maybe not. Who knows? Okay, because they, they anyway. Um, another another way that this is useful to me, and this is the big way that it's useful to me, is uh, Humble Bundles. So I've bought mm-hmm. a lot of games through Humble, and uh, I would not have been able to do that if I couldn't install the games from their website. Um, so yeah, that's. That's why APKs are important. And you will find the ability to install an APK by default blocked. And to yes. enable it, you will have to go to your settings and then security and then uncheck unknown sources so that it can install. Yep. And, all right. So now we're shifting a little bit less out of the, the system settings subject into some things that are going to be more that you find find in the Play Store, right? Um so first up is uh, you're going to want to go and find all of the services that you yourself use. Uh, and we here in this room, the three of us, can't really help uh, you to figure out that list. Because you know what you use. I don't know what you use. Maybe you don't know what you use. You probably use some kind of email app. Hopefully it's Gmail. Get that one. Yeah. Um, Hopefully you use Facebook. Hopefully you use Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you use WhatsApp, maybe you want that. Uh, yep. There's a lot of apps you might want. Find out what they are. Yeah, think think about what you have installed. Uh, if you're coming from iOS, think about what you've got installed on your iPhone. Snapchat. Go, go and find those. What other um, apps do people use? I have no idea. What websites do you go to very often? Do they have an app available on Android? Probably. Go and find it. Yep. Gaming clients oftentimes have mobile ones. Do you guys have? Oh, for like two-factor authentication? Well, I was thinking... Well, yeah. So like the Steam has two-factor authentication mm-hmm. that you do on there. But there's also like... Um, there's a league league chat app that you can do on there. Oh, okay. There's I don't know, obviously Hearthstone and other other little things like that that you can do to. Mm-hmm. And of course, Hearthstone is the full game available yes. on Android. Yes. Um, now the exception here, uh, notable exception, is if possible, please avoid installing the Facebook app. And we'll, let me explain why. So Facebook has had some shady past history, and there's that. And also, it will most likely destroy your battery life. People have done many hours of testing, many days, many weeks, many months of testing. Many moons. 
so many moons, and most of the moons agree that by some amazing engineering, the Facebook app will drain your battery so much that you will not be able to believe it. I've even tested across multiple Nexus 6 devices that having the Facebook app installed will drain your battery a lot more than not having it installed. Now, to make up for that, what do we suggest? Uh, so you can... Uh, the the apps that we're about to suggest are pretty much just HTML wrappers for the Facebook mobile site. Um, so you could just use Chrome if you wanted you to. You could. Um, and Chrome is all right uh, because it will also allow you to get Facebook notifications through Chrome. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to have like a, a distinct app on your device for Facebook, um, go ahead and grab uh, probably Folio would be the best one. Yep. Um, and the the disadvantage to this is that uh, not all of the features from the Facebook app itself are available on the Facebook mobile site. Yep. I can't tell you what features aren't available. I can tell you that Folio will allow you to upload pictures, just mm -hmm. like normal. It will also give you notifications, although they will be slightly slower than if you had the app. They'll be about 10 minutes to del delayed. Uh, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, it is slower to use on average, probably. Because it has to load the a entire page. page, not just mm -hmm. the you know, the comment data kind of thing. Uh, with that said, one of the benefits of this is if you hate having two apps for one service, such as Facebook and then Messenger, you can get around that by just using this Folio app. You can use Messenger on the website just like normal. Mm -hmm. it, there are some advantages. There are some disadvantages. Just try it out. If you use Facebook a lot, you probably won't like this. If you don't use it a lot, you just use it in passing, you know, to chat occasionally with people or just to check on things every so often then this is a great solution yeah um all right next up people use their phones for listening to music a lot they do yeah, i've never done i that. hear they well you know uh so people at least uh usually have some sort of mobile device with them that they use to listen to music right you're crazy uh and back in the day a lot of people would have two devices right they'd, they'd have, have their phone and their ipod exactly <laughs> those crazy kids um, so we're we're still living in a in a world where many many people have accrued a large itunes library yeah um and of course apple until recently didn't really have a a music app on android um they do now have apple music um but i th that might just be their streaming service i'm not sure if you can access your itunes uh, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, so the best way for sure to get your library on available on your phone uh, would be to take all of your files, um, whether they're from iTunes, whether they're MP3s that you bought through Amazon, Amazon or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And upload those to Google Music. Um, and Google Music has had an interesting history that I could talk a lot about. But the bottom line is that Google Music works both as a proper, like, music library of stuff that you have bought and you have unlimited access to right um but it's also a streaming service um so if you have not bought a a, a song um you can listen to it usually for free um but with ads with you know restrictions you won't be able to um if you're playing like playlists and you uh, are not subscribed to their uh subscription program then you know you'll have less control over what order the songs are going to come in etc etc um but it's also, yeah, you can also spend money. Um, I think it's 10 bucks a month, um, 15 bucks for a family plan uh, to have, you know, unlimited access to their whole store. Um, and, of course, now we have YouTube Red included in that. And, and you can I, listen to that, Ted, or whatever it was yep. on a different channel. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, so Google Music, best way that I've found to get your music onto your Android phone. Um, much better, I think, than just plugging it into your computer and dragging like mp3 files over onto your phone um because then you don't really have the option of of having them cached offline versus like streamable um because you know you you either put them onto the phone or you don't have access to them at all whereas with google music you can choose the music that you're going to be listening to the most and have that stored offline um, but then still have access to the stuff that you have in your library, but you don't listen to very often, and you'll just have to stream it, right, and use some data. Yep. Um, any any other thoughts on music? I know you don't listen to music. Well, Ryan, so but... all I would say is if you need a... Uh, for some reason you don't listen to music, there's some other things you can do. So 
there's uh, just music playing apps. So if you just need a music player and you're okay just putting your MP3s on your phone, you don't want any of the streaming nonsense, you can get an app like Shuttle Plus. It's a really great music player. It looks pretty. It has album art and everything you can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want to play music through like online radio stations, there's a great app I've used called Transistor, incidentally, and it can play uh, M3U uh, audio files and stream your station very easily. And of course, most uh, radio stations these days also come uh, in an app most often. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to your favorite radio station, whether that be local or not, just on your phone. Um, so yeah, Ian, you're coming from iTunes, right? So when yeah. we get home, we're going to definitely go and uh, make sure that all of that stuff has been imported into Google Music. Yeah, most of it has somehow. I don't know how exact. Was, did you were you messing with my computer? No, I wasn't. No, but uh, we've had a long history of uh, as a of friendship, and uh, at, chances are, at some point, I forced you to go and take that step and upload some stuff to Google Music. But but here's the thing is. The the most recent stuff that I have on here is Balkan Beatbox, as well as a Nickel Creek album. I didn't buy those until, like... This school year, this right? This school year. Yeah. Um, so what we may have done is we may have installed the Google Music... Um, what do they call it? Uh, the Music Manager, I think, uh, which was like their, their old yes. uh, uploader. Uh, so it might still be on your computer. It might still be just passively looking through your iTunes and uploading things whenever you buy stuff. I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, my most recent album that I bought is not on there, unfortunately, because okay. I do know which one that is. Um, and that's just the most recent Snarky Puppy album. Okay. But, but yeah, we can we can figure that out, um, definitely. Definitely. Um, okay, this next one, big, big one, very important for everybody to know about. Uh, so listen up. Google Opinion Rewards. This is an app. Go search for it on the Play Store. Right now. Yeah, go and install it. Open it up. Accept all of the things. Um, this is an app that Google has that will send you questions, surveys, surveys. At, pre- periodically. And in exchange for answering these brief surveys, usually they're like two to five questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually on the lower end of that, you know, two to three. And uh, in exchange for answering a few questions, you get anywhere from like 10 cents to 50 cents mm-hmm. uh, at a time. Yeah. So the, the the amount of time and effort that you put in versus the amount of money that you get out is uh, pretty darn good. Um, and of course, this is uh, play credit. So it's, it's like a gift card that you have in the Google Play Store. Um, and uh it's a really really good way to just kind of consistently have a little bit of money in your in your play store account so that uh if somebody gives you an app recommendation somebody tells you hey you got to play this game or whatever uh you don't have to worry about opening up your own wallet and uh and spending some of your own money and it's uh really easy so it's generally based on where you go mhm or where you've been so if you don't go anywhere you probably won't get too many surveys it also is to some degree based on your demographics. Yeah. So there, in some some cases, you might not get many. In other cases, you might get tons. Uh, another thing to note is uh, rewards tends to favor the device you've most recently opened it on. Mm-hmm. So if you have a tablet and a phone that are both synced on the, the same account, open it up a couple of times on your phone just so that it knows that that's the one you actually travel with. And you think it would know. But it doesn't actually stalk you. It just does it lightly. So the interesting thing, actually, is that it has asked me questions about um, like shopping trips that I took. But it asks those questions on the tablet instead of on the phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, even though the phone was the device that I had with me. Mm-hmm. So it, it gets confused. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it, it, that's okay because it's the same account. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, the, the surveys are also timed. So if you have a device that you favor more... And you get it on the other device, I see that would be saying. a problem. So you're saying if I have a tablet that I let sit on my bedside table for weeks on end? Kind of, I kind of want them that person, yeah. Mm, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, fortunately, yeah, I open up my tablet at least once every two days usually. Once every two days. Well, they're usually 24 hours, so you better go quick. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a part of your morning routine? Yeah. Sit on the toilet, do one or two? Now, um, actually, if, if you get a notification from Google Opinion Rewards, uh, but you don't interact with that device very often 
You're going to want to know that that notification came through, which brings me to the next one. Uh, and Ryan's laughing at me because he doesn't think that this is uh, an app that everybody needs. Uh, but I think that it's it's a pretty darn good. Um, so this is called Push Bullet, and uh, it's an app that takes the... Uh, it does several things, but the primary one that I use it for is it takes the notifications from my Android devices and it uh, displays them on my computer. Um, so no matter what device I'm using at the time, I'll always know what you know what is trying to ping me, what information is trying to get through, right? Um, and in a lot of cases, for like messaging apps and things like that, um, you can reply directly on your computer and it'll take what you type on the computer push it over to your phone and then your phone will send that off uh, with the uh, with the reply yeah it's also useful for um, if you're like uh, reading something on one of your devices and you want to continue reading it on another one um, you can push it from one device to another um, you can also push files but you know honestly yeah usually you're not using files on a phone um, so yeah, I, I use it for pushing links around a lot, um, and it's yeah, it's just a generally a really easy way to kind of take these separate devices that you have in your life and make them into one cohesive experience. Yes. Yes. This is one of those sort of essential things. It's not really essential. It's sort of essential. Yeah. If if you use if you use your your phone. If you have more computer, than average, then you'll probably like it. Well, I would say if you have a computer that you use frequently and you don't typically use your phone while at the computer or you don't have it next to you charging or mm -hmm. sitting by you or for some reason you don't want to take it out of your pocket. I'm super lazy. I don't want to take my phone out of my pocket. I'm that person too. Uh, if you're If you're that person, then maybe you're interested in this. If you're not that person and you can just be fine using your computer and phone at the same time, then this might not matter to you. Um, all right. This next uh, next subject was uh, given or suggested to us by Max Marty, um, and this is LastPass or some other uh, comparable password manager system. Yeah, like uh, Dashlanes or NPass. Yeah. Uh, so Google them for details. Typing passwords really sucks. Uh, it it sucks on computers, but it sucks way more on phones. Yep. Um, so. If if you can find a way to have your password stored for you and you don't have to put them in, uh, that's going to save you a lot of hassle, a lot of time, um, and it will help to keep you sane and so, safe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because um, if somebody can't, uh, you know, drug you up and and try and get your passwords out of you because you don't actually know them, then uh, they can't get them. So. Right. I will describe LastPass a little bit. It's a password vault system, so you store all of your normal passwords for various websites and apps inside of it, and it gets a master password that's super good and long, and then you just need to remember that one pretty mm -hmm. much. Now, in order to use it on mobile, as far as I know, you do have to pay for it. Which is where Google Opinion Rewards can come in. Which is Indeed. where rewards come in. Now, on desktop, you don't have to pay for it, so you can try it out on your desktop. You can get it all set up there, and then you can install it on your phone and sign in, and hopefully you will enjoy the experience so much you will just pay for it for 10 years and be done with it. Now, I'm a bit of a plebeian in this, uh, in this scenario, because uh, I've been using Chrome's password manager uh, for many many years mm -hmm. um and i haven't made the switch over because i've just you know i've, I've been like i'm kind of invested in this You're system right now yeah um however on mobile of course i i can only use those passwords when i'm in chrome right so if i am logging into a particular app i can't get the password and so one of the things LastPass offers on mobile is it offers two ways to do login in apps and you can either ask LastPass to give you little notifications you can copy your password out of mm. into an app from or you can also have it which is not maybe as great although more convenient you can have it autofill app password boxes mm -hmm. which is pretty cool too yeah um all right next thing sms clients so this is definitely definitely pretty unique to android is uh the fact that most of the kind of what we would think of as system apps you know come pre-installed on the phone um they're essential for you to be able to use on your device as a phone um, yeah as a phone right uh a lot of them are actually interchangeable you can you can install a different one and use that one instead of the one that comes pre-installed on your phone um so the first uh, thing in that in that 
category that we're going to talk about is SMS clients. Mm -hmm. um, so the texting app that you use on your phone. Um, you know, Google's made one. Uh, of course, Samsung's made one, and they want you to use theirs instead of Google's. Um, it, it, Everybody's if, made one. Everybody's made one, right? Because um, it's, it's a fairly simple app to make. make. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of third-party ones. Um, Ryan uses... I use Textra. It's a nice app. It is free to use. There's an ad occasionally shown on top. You can buy it for one ninety nine, I believe, sometimes on sale. And uh, you might want to do that. Or you can also use the stock app for messaging, which is called what? Messenger. Which is very funny because there's pretty much like thousands of apps called Messenger these days. Yeah. So mm -hmm. make sure you get the right one. Notably, Facebook Messenger, yeah. which is also just called Messenger. Mm -hmm. So just watch out when you're downloading that. And the reason you might want to download the stock app to try is if you bought an OEM phone, so Samsung, HTC, LG, you probably won't have it by default. You'll probably be using their funny-looking or terrible-looking messaging app, which is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and a lot of them will have different types of theming that you can put on there. Um, so take a look around, find one that you like, um, and uh, start using that. Mm -hmm. um, another, another example of this would be the keyboard app. Um, Android has had third-party keyboards for a very, very long time, um, which actually was a very good thing because it allowed us to discover this wonderful thing called gesture typing, yep. which was uh, kind of pioneered by SwiftKey, yep. right? Um, and now everybody, well, everybody on Android. Uh, well, pretty much every good keyboard has gesture support. Yep. And what does that mean? What is gesture support? Uh, so this is where you, instead of tapping individually on each individual letter that you want to put in a word, you put your finger down on the first letter, and then you just drag over to the second letter, drag to this third, you know, you drag through the entire word, and if you've done it, you know, close enough, then the keyboard will probably be able to figure out what word you meant. Now, I, uh, I suddenly just had an aneurysm, and I remembered everything I ever knew, and uh, did we just attribute swipe to SwiftKey? I believe so. Well, swipe pioneered swipe. Oh, there was a there was a separate one called Swipe. Yeah. Okay. With a Y, not an I. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Swipe. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My my bad. Mm -hmm. um. So yeah. So swiping on your keyboard is a wonderful thing to do. Don't forget that you can do it. Most OEM keyboards will come with it. Mm -hmm. uh, most OEM keyboards are awful. Their dictionaries yeah. are terrible. Their features are funny looking and gaudy. And so I very much suggest getting the Google keyboard. Yeah. I feel very strongly about this subject. Pro tip about the Google keyboard. You don't have to leave it white. You can make it dark. Mm-hmm. I definitely... It's a setting. Go yep. do it. It, it has theming. Um, the other the other reason, the important reason that I think uh, people should use the Google keyboard is because it will synchronize your personal dictionary uh, between uh, different devices if you if you set it to do that in it, in its settings. Yep. Um, which is very, very useful because when you get a new tablet, you get a new phone, you don't want to have to start from scratch and have it learn your sister's obscure Indian name again. That could be a thing, or it could also learn all your mistakes. That's also good, too. That's Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, keyboards get better the more you use them, hopefully. Um, ah, here we go. So... Uh, yeah, note-taking is another good, uh, subject. Um, I, I like to use, so, so for note-taking specifically, like, you know, if, you, if you're doing quick things like, uh, making, um, a grocery list mm -hmm. or whatever, um, I like to use Google Keep. Yep. Um, I didn't, I used to not because it wasn't cross-platform, it wasn't available on iOS, so I couldn't send those notes to people in my life in, 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 in a iOS. former version it wasn't shareable either right yeah and so their new versions of keep are great mm -hmm. it's very simple it's very easy to use it's great for grocery lists great for just lists of things you can check off mm -hmm. um I, I, you can insert uh photos into there i think yep. um all sorts of things um the elephant in the room is evernote you see what i did there wow. their icon is is an elephant um i've tried them out uh, you know, so I want I, to try to like Evernote. Yeah, this me is, too. This is for a different show, you know. Uh, try it. If you like it, use it. If you don't like it, just you don't have to. You can yeah. just use Keep. I I got pretty fed up with the way that they kept trying to push me to get the premium. Yep. They got ads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Let's see. Uh, another another thing in in our 
category of, of system apps that you can replace um, is the custom launchers. Um, thanks, Connor Miller, for bringing this one up. Um, so the home screen, like, that is probably the most fundamental piece that you would think of as, like, this is the operating system, right? right the this UI, this cannot looks. be replaced. There's no way that they're going to allow me to to make put my own on. So can it be replaced? It totally can. <sighs> yeah. Um, and this is one of the most important fundamental ways that you can take your phone and make it into your own mm -hmm. um and and make it work the best and quickest for you um it changed my life ryan when you got me to finally switch over to action launcher um because that was an um, it's an amazing piece of software that has allowed me to for one thing reduce the number of home screens that i have without reducing the number of apps that that are available to me on my home screen right um you know I, I love the way that it has a list so like, let, let's describe but, how how action launcher at least works okay so your traditional stock launcher on nexus phones are the what launcher the google now launcher google now launcher and so that has the little app drawer button the white circle with mm -hmm. little app squares that has that right in the middle well with action launcher that all goes away you don't need that anymore because mm -hmm. Your app drawer is now docked to the left side of the screen. You can just swipe it out anytime you want it. Mm -hmm. And it's all sorted in alphabetical order, and you can just jump to any app you want. And that keeps it all nice and clean. And instead of being a grid of icons, it is now a, a list, list that yep. is sorted in a human identifiable way alphabetical order not in some weird, insane way. Now, fortunately, the Google Now launcher currently. Uh, sorts by alphabetical order. Right. Um, so they took a cue from that. OEM launchers, however, aren't as clever. Oh my gosh. So for example, Samsung yeah. devices decided to not sort in order. So if you do not want to deal with A apps after Z apps, well, you can fix that by installing a third-party launcher. Mm -hmm. Other features of Action Launcher while we're here are fancy folders and fancy swiping gestures to do various things. Very customizable. In addition to that, if you want to customize the icons of your apps, you can do that. Oh, yes. And that that's not specific launcher by launcher, no, right? No, you, you, you can, can just do that. grab an icon pack. Yeah, you can do that pretty much across all major launchers. Another launcher that everybody loves is Nova Launcher, which is very similar to Action Launcher in that it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yes, launchers. Go try out some, especially if you have a, a, a phone that has like terrible skins on it. Such as Samsung. Yeah. Now, that won't obscure everything from the Samsung theming, right. but it will help. There's nothing that you can do about the fact that they have replaced the settings app with something awful and uh, changed the quick settings up up top You know, yep. when you pull down the notifications. But, you know. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, Google Photos. Um, I highly suggest that you open up Google Photos, set it to automatically synchronize, you know, your photos. Now, what do you at least suggest? on Wi-Fi, high quality or raw? So I, I am a photographer, <laughs> and I'm going to sound very pretentious right now, uh, but I absolutely need the original size of all of my photos. So I have it set to do that. Um, if you do not need that. Uh, then go ahead and do high quality. Um, it'll take all of your photos and downsize them to 16 megapixels, right? Uh, something size? like that, I yeah. believe. Um, so it, it's still a reasonable size, um, not too small. Um, and when you, when you have that setting activated, then your photos will not take up any space in, in your Google allocated storage space. Now, if you are not pretentious like Ian, I would definitely agree use the high quality option, which takes no space. Yep definitely worthwhile you will still have as far as i know the original copies on your phone and if you don't delete them you'll have them for as long as you have them mm -hmm. um and i i think actually if you have the original uh size being uploaded um then google photos will kind of every once in a while go through and figure out like okay he hasn't opened up this photo for a while it's from a long time ago. I can safely delete my local copy of this to mm -hmm. free up some space on the device. Yep. Um, because the and photos will manage all of that for you. Yep. Yep. Um, and yeah, the the reason that you that you probably want to use high quality instead of original as well is because uh, you only have 15 gigs of storage space, and that 15 gigs is shared between your Gmail, Photos, and Google Drive. And it fills fairly fast with modern phone resolutions mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, an S7 will take pretty big pictures, so 
Just yeah. brace yourself. Yep. Uh, while we're on the subject of pictures, there's this wonderful, amazing thing called photospheres. And they seem like a thing of the future, even though we're in 2016, and we've been able to take photospheres for a very long time. So this is like, think about a panorama, and then take that and fill the whole circle. So just look all around you. The whole you. sphere. Yeah, the whole sphere. Um, it, actually, this is a better way to describe it. Google Street View. Go into Google Maps, drag that little yellow person down onto a street, and take a look at uh, at what their Google Street View cars have taken pictures of. You can take pictures like that, too, with your phone. Um, not all camera apps have this as an option. So what I would recommend is download the Google Street View app. Um, and in that app, you can open it up, and it will allow you to take photospheres um, from your camera. And... If you want to, you can actually upload them to Google Maps so that they can become, you know, visible publicly. Uh, when people are looking at an area, they'll see, you know, maybe they'll they'll see your photosphere as a thing down below. Um, I have a few photospheres on Google Maps that have gotten many, many thousands of views, mm-hmm. um, possibly in the millions. I don't remember. Um, I'll have to look again. But yeah, photospheres are really, really cool. Like and- where at? Um, uh, an island just outside of Luleå, um, in Sweden, uh, we were taking a hiking trip and, uh, I took a nice photosphere of like the beach and, you know, the sky and everything. And, the, mm. and so that one, uh, I think has the most views for me. Now they're fairly rare. So if you make one and you post it somewhere, people are going to flock to it because nobody does it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now if this sounds like too much work to you, you can just take a picture, which is uh, pretty easy. You open your camera app and you hit the shutter button. Now, even the camera app actually can be replaced. That's right. You can right. use other ones. Um, Google's, uh, Google's is kind of basic. Um, it's if, very basic, but it's okay. Yeah. If you don't need a lot of features, you don't need manual settings, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's okay, and it's not ugly, which is more than can be said for some of the stock ones that come with phones. <laughs> now, that said, if you do choose to go down the road of using a third-party camera app, you may lose some of the marquee features of your phone's camera such as, you know, like moving photos or uh, weird uh, blinking detection or other such things. So just keep that in mind. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Ah, explorers, file explorers. Um, so most people, I think, will not be using files uh, no. on their phones the way that they use files on their computers. Um, but in the rare case that you do have to go and track down a file, like maybe... Uh, yeah, some, some app has downloaded some stuff into some folder at some point that wasn't the download folder. You need to be able to find it. Maybe, um, go, go ahead and grab a file explorer. Um, there's some free ones. Um, Ryan suggests solid explorer, um, which is not too expensive. Now in the future, by the time you listen to this in fall of 2016, and Android N is present in, on everyone's phone. Oh, that's true. You will be able to use the built-in Explorer, which is fairly decent. It has cut, copy, and paste functionality. And you can browse your directories full of pictures and downloads and whatever you like. Now, if you do like uh, a little bit more fanciness, or if you actually know what you're doing, you can use Solid Explorer. I believe it's two ninety nine in the Play Store if you want to buy it. It's great because you can use network shares, you can use Samba shares, uh, FTP, SSH, whatever you like, and it's wonderful. Looks good, easy to use. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Android Device Manager. So this is a pretty big one. Um, it's you'll find it in the settings under. We were looking at it earlier. We were. It is one. settings, then under Google, and then under security. Ah, but yes. don't be confused with sign in and security. It's just security. Yeah. Um, so. Android Device Manager is uh, your way of finding your phone after you've lost it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I've misplaced my phone. It's somewhere in the living room. I don't want to, like, search through all of the cushions of our giant uh, sectional, right? So I can grab a, a computer, log into my Google account, um, go to Android Device Manager, and uh, make it ring, yep. right? There's several different things you can do. You can make your device ring at full volume. You can uh, lock the device with a custom passphrase or if you think somebody else has your device. Or you can wipe, wipe it, it completely. <laughs> yep. And, of course, it'll tell you exactly where the device is. On a map. Um, yep. Um, Down to a few meters. I, so do you know where to go with the baseball bat? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
Um, I think it's really funny because uh, they, they have a Android device manager app for the phones. So if you want to go and find one of your other devices with the device that you have in your or, hand Or, you know, maybe you want to find uh, somehow you can sign on to a friend's phone to find your actual yeah, phone. That's true. You can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If, if, you're, if you go into that and you look at the phone that you currently have in your hand and it and it instead of telling you like the location in terms of the latitude and longitude it will simply say in your hand oh really uh, yeah that's a uh, that's pretty cute cool. little joke that yeah, i like that's good <laughs> um ooh last thing wow this just flew by um so the last thing is uh google cloud print um so this is uh it's been in existence for quite a few years but most people still aren't uh, aware of its existence um cloud print is a way for you to essentially share your uh, your printer that's a, plugged into a, a traditional computer with all of your devices that are running Google-centric uh, operating systems, right? Um, so anything that has Chrome on it, you'll be able to access your Google Cloud print uh, printers on. Um, anything that's on Android, well, you'll be able to print to your Google Cloud print printers. Um, so for example, I have uh, at work, there's a printer in my computer lab, right? Um, and my the desktop that I use at, at work can access that printer. So I set up that desktop to use that printer as one of my Google Cloud printers. So right now I could whip out my phone um, and print off something and send it to that printer. And uh, since the desktop's not on right now, it probably won't print right away. But once I go and turn on that computer, then it will print immediately that, that print job. That's very handy. Mm-hmm. You might not need this ever in your life, but it's cool that you can have it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I encourage everybody to try to live a paperless life because I'm a computer science enthusiast and there uh, you go. And I hate paper. I always misplace paper. I never misplace files. Doing it right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this list was the essentials. These aren't even all of the apps you can have. We could give you more suggestions on things you might like to find on the play store for your Android device. Yeah, and we probably will. We'll um, currently we have on uh, Second Opinion, our, uh, one of our other shows at the Nexus. Um, we have a review for Phoenix up, uh, that, which is our favorite Twitter app. Yep. So um, we'll probably be doing some more things like uh, we were just talking about Action Launcher a bunch that might be coming up soon. Um, yeah, message us if you if you uh, have want suggestions. Yeah, want suggestions? Um, if you have suggestions for things that we should talk about here on the extra dimension later on um or if you have other apps for us to try out too yes I mean, i'm a i'm a new guy too to this so if you guys have anything that you think that i should try out especially as a new user or even as an existing user let oh yeah us know. i'm always open to getting uh, app suggestions to try please out. send me an app that i can buy i beg of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah how much how much money do you have in your oh place, see or, now if uh, i told you i would probably be kicked out of the program <laughs> <laughs> um yeah let's just say it's not a little bit so, so if you have any feedback uh, along any of those lines please go ahead and click on that uh, contact button uh on the show notes um once again the show notes are at uh, the nexus.tv slash ted10 um the contact button is underneath our beautiful faces that's mm-hmm. right speaking of our beautiful faces where can we find all of us on the internet well you can find me just about everywhere especially on the twitter at randomar and of course and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Nobody uses Google Plus anymore. That's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm Ian Decker. You can find me on Facebook. I'm Bigfoot at Bigfoot1138 on Twitter, though I don't really check that that much. Um, you will now because you have a new phone. Yeah. Ooh. And apparently I need to get Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> um, or just on Steam as Bigfoot. And I am Ian Arbuck, and you can find me as Ian Arbuck most places, uh, especially soon. Hopefully, I will have a website. Let me help you with that. Uh, is, yeah, I do have a server running now, oh, yeah. so we can. Uh, it should be rather painless, I hope, to set that up. Thanks for listening to The Extra Dimension, everybody, and uh, have a good week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Now.